Hi, I'm Attachment Specialist Adam Lane Smith, and today I want to talk to you about how our culture is making insecure men. We're manufacturing them, we're grinding them out of the factories, it, they're coming out already flawed, already hurt, and already struggling to engage in life the way that men should, the way that even human beings should. Today I'm going to talk to you about insecure men and how our society is doing it on purpose. <laughs> Darn near doing it on purpose. To do this, I'm going to have to take you back in time to the World War I. What was life like in the West and in America? Life, I don't want to say it was better, but we had deeper intimate connections because we had to. More Americans lived in the rural areas and family farms than lived in cities. More Americans lived out in the, in the middle of nowhere than lived in the cities, if you can imagine that kind of world. More Americans lived within 10 miles of where they were born. People, most people didn't even travel more than 10 miles from where they were born. They didn't really have automobiles. They weren't very widely available at that time. I think they were just barely invented. They had horses and carriages and walking. The stuff you read about in the Bible that they had, they still had 100 years ago. It wasn't that much better. By, maybe bicycles and unicycles at that point. This was the world most people were born into, and this is back then, and this is the world most of us were made for. The human species, they trace us back, depends what your beliefs are, but anywhere from 200,000 years for Homo sapiens to 10,000 years for young earthers and, and, and families like that, um, religions like that. Anywhere from 10,000 years to 200,000 years. Either way, up 10,000 years ago, about 11,000 years ago, the Neolithic Revolution hit, and we all of a sudden could settle in one place. But for the first 190,000 years of our species, we wandered in tight-knit family groups. We barely even had walls. We didn't even have walls because we couldn't even build a, situ a, a situation like that. Maybe we had hide tents. Maybe we lived in adjacent caves, but we lived fairly out in the open with each other. Out in the open as far as together couldn't keep secrets. We weren't made to keep secrets. We aren't meant to have separate identities from our se real self and our tribe. We are meant to be who we are. We are meant to show who we are. We are meant to live to our principles. We are meant to be surrounded by people who know us. We're meant to be surrounded by people who actually care about us because you have to care about each other in a world like that to survive. If you don't care about each other, if it's every man for himself, then your tribe dies. Those tribes died. That's why we have such incredible bonding mechanisms in our brain that forcibly bond us to all kinds of people in our life, even sometimes we, people don't, we, we don't like. Sometimes people that make us mad, we still bond to them because we can solve problems together. If you have seen any man movie about dudes who hate each other, but they come together to blow up the bad guys, and they, at the end they, they shake hands and they're kind of best bros, but they still beat each other up occasionally, you understand what I mean. You have to come together against a, a separate enemy and it forcibly bonds you together. I say forcibly, it's not like it, it, it holds a gun to your head, but it bonds you to those other people without you understanding what's happening. Vasopressin bonds are incredibly strong. Oxytocin bonds then are very strong as well. Dopamine bonds addicting us to those people and making us want to be around them. Serotonin releases. There's all kinds of stuff that happens with these releases, but that was the world we were meant for. No secrets open connections, deep family bonds, working together to survive. Everything is out in the open and everything is structured so that your life is as stable and predictable as possible. That's what it was. World War I, through a, like, a whole generation of young men, basically, in the West and in America, into a meat grinder. A lot of them died. Some of them came home shell-shocked. Some of them survived. Some of them made it. You know, culture didn't explode. And then we came back and you have what's called the lost generation. People that just didn't know what to do. Most people forget this. The Steinbeck generation, the, uh, the Hemingway generation. They came back and said, what the heck is the point of life? I look at was it Tennessee Williams, the glass menagerie is, is this bleak, nihilistic um, uh, play about a young man whose father has abandoned the family. And the young man, I'm mean, sorry to spoil this, but it's like 100 years old, he eventually, he, he's taking care of his mom and sister, but hates his life. And he eventually abandons them. And I believe this is an autobiography of the author himself. The lost generation shredded family bonds. And that's why you see the roaring 20s was people running away from family bonds to escape into alcohol and the prohibition. Like, 
Why was it such a big deal that alcohol all of a sudden was not available? People were drinking constantly to try to deal with the problems, and then they banned alcohol because it became even more of a problem than usual, and then they just dumped themselves into it as much as they could to run away. It was dancing and drinking and going crazy to try to erase the pain that the lost generation, the young people, were feeling. It wasn't 90-year-olds doing the drinking and dancing as much. It, it, so, Roaring Twenties hit. Then the stock market crash, right? The Great Depression, the Dust Bowl, everything that crashed, everything is just, just caved in and society crumbled everywhere. Over in Europe, Germany was crumbling. The other nations, some of them were doing okay during that time, but it was still rough. And then the U.S. stock market crash and everything, all kinds of stuff happened. Germany was not doing well during that time. <laughs> I don't think I even need to say that, but um, it, it just devastated another generation. That lost generation who'd already been devastated was devastated again. And you have in this time what's called the silent generation. They just suffered quietly. They took care of their families. They fed their kids by working 18-hour days. They left their family farms, which were now blown away or, or lost them because of, of finances, and moved into the city. Suddenly you have the, more Americans living in the cities than in rural for the first time ever. And all of a sudden, they're working 18-hour jobs. They're exhausted. They're not spending time together. They have no idea how to bond as a family. They're just trying to survive. And their baby boomer kids... Some of them got it, some of them didn't. The silent generation and the greatest generation also fought World War II. Another meat grinder. A lot of them were volunteers. A lot of the most toughest, most enduring people with the strongest genetics went over in Europe and died and left us with the people who were not as genetically predisposed to aggression <laughs> or predisposed to push. I've heard that, that idea, that hypothesis, I should say, quite a few times. Um, I don't know if it's true or not, but... We'll say it is for now. Let's argue. Argue with me in the comments. There, there you go. Leave me a comment. Argue with me. This, this series of events, the baby boomers are now born into a family that, no family farm, broken apart, cracked, fractured. People don't know how to take care of each other. Families aren't around. Mom and dad are both working now. Suddenly moms are working too. Everyone's gone. You're raising yourself. Some of the baby boomers got it and said, this is my parents loving me, that we're barely surviving, but they love me. And some of the baby boomers said, this is crap. My parents yell at me all the time. They're stressed. They're never around. I never bonded with them. They don't care about me. Screw these people. Baby boomers rebelled. About half of them. Somewhere around there. Not all of them, but a big, big chunk of them. You see the rebellions. Huge rebellions. All kinds of sex, drugs, rock and roll, nothing else matters. You see Greece of let's just have lots of sex and have fun and give the middle finger to our family. Screw those guys. The rise of the automobile being regular now in everybody's lives. So now change dating culture. Instead of dating the people that you're, you had known your whole life and dating within your inner circle and your pool within 10 miles of you, you can go date strangers 40 miles away in the city and just sleep with them. And who cares? You'll just drive home at the end of it. That was the change dating. You can go out and you can just have sex at that make out point. You know, all the movies always have make out point. You just go park and everybody's having sex in their cars. That was not what every baby boomer did, but that was what a large chunk of that population did when they had those crippling insecurities that they didn't grow up feeling loved and they didn't understand what love was. And their parents, when they died, handed them, you know, an inheritance which included usually money, but also like a bucket of rusted nails. Like, you will need this someday. I remember I had to trade my own fingernails for some of these nails during the Dust Bowl. The baby moves are like, thanks? <laughs> what am I going to do with this? This baby boomer generation, fun, 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 me, 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 half of them, half of them really good people, half of them really not good people. I shouldn't say it that way. Half of them incredibly selfish and narcissistic and hurtful. Destroyed their families, their first families. Generation X, Generation Y, kids just are like deer in headlights, like what just happened? We grew up with all these family system, family values and you, you baked into me how important family is and then we just exploded. Like there's a meme for Generation X of you, the world you were raised to live in no longer exists. That's Generation X and Y. You're raised in one, one world and then suddenly, hey, sometimes love just doesn't work out. Sometimes people just stop loving each other. We're going to crack apart the family. Boom, gone. Baby boomers, the, that section, again, the good ones, loved. The broken ones, hated their kids. 
and said, you X and Y, you kids just sit there like deer in the headlights. You're boring. You're miserable. You're, you're holding me back. I'm going to go have a better family. So they set up a better family. The baby boomers remarried. The ones who remarried, I should say. I sound down on the baby boomers. Half of their generation, really good people. Half of their generation, really destructive. Really destructive. Not maliciously destructive so much, but it's the first time in history that we stop seeing survival skills handed down. The baby boomers stopped, many of them, stopped handing down survival skills to their kids. And they started pressuring them to go out and learn specialist skills from someone else. Go to school, they'll teach you that. Go to church, they'll teach you morality. Go to church, go to, go to school, go to college, go to college. If you don't go to college, you're a failure. Go to college. We see them pushing that off and saying, go learn specialist skills from someone else. I don't have time to teach you the, the survival skills, and I don't need to anymore because we live in a society. At that point, baby boomers remarried, had the millennial generation. They had screwed up with the X and Y by just kind of letting them do what they wanted to do. So now they wanted to micromanage the millennials into the ground. And they're older. The baby boomers are older. And the millennials despise them. And if you see this online, all the memes, millennials just... Millennials and baby boomers, man. It's like two cats, soak them in gasoline, set them on fire, and give them each a, a gun. And that basically watch them kill each other. And that is what baby boomers and millennials are. And it's because they tried to make exact copies of themselves into the millennials. Or they had failed with X and Y, they wanted to make exact copies in the millennials. Millennials hated them for it. And millennials were not raised with the family values, were not raised with, you know, family, take care of your family, family will love you, didn't even know what a functional marriage looked like. They were their parents' second marriage, so they knew marriage didn't work out. It was all sex, drugs, and rock and roll. It, everything was sex and sleaze and drugs on every kid, every kid's show. Everything was just drugs and sex and, and bleak, bleak nihilistic outlook on everything. And that was what millennials were raised with, was nothing is ever going to be okay. Nobody will ever love you. Your parents hate you for some reason. You don't know why. Marriage will explode. Wait for the second divorce because the third one's going to be even funnier. That was what millennials were raised with. And then they went out and tried to have kids. And it was a nightmare. The millennial dating scene is just unbelievably bad. The Zoomers coming up are like, what? They've never seen a functional anything. And they're coming up saying, what are all of you crazy people doing? Which is why a lot of the research shows that the Z Generation Z is in many ways as conservative as the silent generation was as they went through the Dust Bowl. Because uh, the Generation Z are going through a complete cultural collapse, the same that the silent generation went through back during the Dust Bowl, the Great Depression, all of that. Generation Z is going through the same cultural, uh, different type, but a cultural collapse. Generation, what's the new one? Alpha is coming out. Generation Z is rough, but millennials also are, are rough. Generation X and Y are just still, to this day, deer in the headlights. Um, there's a meme of, of uh, not Alec Baldwin, but he's smoking a cigarette and just looks like, oh, life is over. And that's Generation X and Y. Pretty much since day one, have came out came out of the womb smoking a cigarette already saying, oh, life is over. That's pretty much <laughs> X and Y. Millennials, Zoomers, all of these... All of these, from X to Alpha, no, it's kind of weird, from X to Alpha, all of these men have been raised to believe that the world is ending, that we're in a total collapse, that there's no such thing as a loving family, that there's no such thing as a loving marriage, there's no such thing as unconditional love, there is no such thing as security, there's no such thing as financial security. There's no such thing as a home you can rely on. All those old songs, you can, you can go home, go home, find your family, and you know, all the Christmas songs. It's so great to go home for the holidays. It's so, uh, none of us know that because our parents sold the family home. <laughs> or they divorced and split it up. All of those touchstones that humans would have taken for granted 200,000 years ago, 10,000 years ago, 5,000 years ago, 100 years ago, Family, love, bonding, trust, openness, being able to share who you are, being accepted by your tribe, marrying the girl next door, marrying the boy next door that you had known, that it was safe and would take care of you, being able to take care of your family, having the structure, the survival skills to be able to survive on your own even. Now we can't even do that. We can't even wipe our own butts anymore. If the grocery store runs out of food, what are we going to do? We will die. What are you going to do? Eat your cat? All of this has created a system where men now have to hyper-compete 
for every scrap of affection, approval, care, love, sexual approval from women. And the women that are out there that men are, these men are able to find are also damaged themselves. So they're giving in to these competitions and don't know how to embrace healthy men either. There are so many men now who don't know how to live because our brains are telling us we live in worst case scenario. We live in a scenario where our culture has been absolutely obliterated. Our family is dead. Our village is destroyed. Everything is overrun by strangers, and we now live in a hostile environment. It's as if our village was killed, we're the only survivor, and we've been stolen by slavers who are now raising us as a stranger in their culture. All of the men nowadays, this is how our brains are living. Because we're disconnected from our parents, they don't have time for us, we're thrown in daycare the moment we're born. We can't find a woman who will marry us. We feel like we have to hyper-compete against dudes who have ten girlfriends of their own, and we have none. And what are you going to do? Get a job with a corporation? They're just going to fire you. They're going to lay you off. The moment you are not profitable, you're gone. What are you going to do? Start a business? Well, COVID pretty much tanked as many small businesses as they possibly could. I love small businesses. It's the, back, it's the backbone of any economy. But our modern culture is obliterating that too. And men who stick out, men who have an honor code, men who push back, men who, if somebody pushes you or, or hurts somebody, you take a swing at them and, and administer justice, you are now put in prison because you are not allowed to administer justice. The state is the only, only decider of justice. And if you ever try to do anything, you are now a criminal. So men can't move. They can't breathe. They can't get married. They can't date. They can't look because the male gaze... <gasps> He looked at me. He's, he's a rapist. Men can't look. They can't breathe. They can't think. They can't talk. They can't get a job. They can't be secure. They can't have a family. They can't own a home. They can't just get a plot of land, build a house, have a wife, raise kids, and be together. That's what most men want. They can't do that. We're blocked from doing that. And we have a hundred years of broken system that has erased the memory of being able to do that. So it's no longer mentally even possible. Those aren't even possibilities anymore. So the things that are natural to us, that our brains are designed for, it is impossible for us to have them. Now what is pain? Pain is your brain's way, your systems, your, 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 your nerve system, your nervous system, your, your body's way of telling you. You are in a non-optimized state that is now damaging to you. And you must then, pain demands a response, you must then respond to the pain by seeking out the correct optimized state that will get you away from that pain to where your body is meant to be. If you put a hand on a hot stove, it burns, you pull your pain demands a response, you respond by pulling your hand off, it slowly stops hurting, and you say, oh, okay, that was relieving. And you get, you get a rush of some chemicals that say, yes, keep your hand off the stove, that felt good, don't do that again. So bad associated with the sto association with the stove, good association with not touching the stove. That is what is meant to happen. But when your culture is designed to hurt you from the moment of your birth, that you're dumped in daycare and your brain says, my parents don't have time for me. They are abandoning me. My hunter-gatherer parents don't have time for me. They are abandoning me all these hours of the day and they barely come home at nighttime and they're so tired they don't want to play with me. I must be, there's something wrong with my culture. I must be primed to be anxious all the time and be perfect. Otherwise, my parents will get so sick of me, they'll abandon me and I'll die. That's what the brain is saying. This is attachment. This is the core of attachment. From then on, what do you do? This is why men are so insecure today. We say, why are young men so insecure? Why can't they make decisions? Why are young men so... Why is testosterone plummeting? There's probably a couple reasons, but I believe this is a major piece of it. Why are men so anxious? Why is there an epidemic of men killing themselves? Why is there all these different things? Why? Well, the drug epidemic takes away some of this pain. If you are in pain, 24 hours a day, emotional pain, 24 hours a day because you're in a non-optimized, danger, horrible state that is not going to get better, you don't believe it can ever get better because you've never even seen better or heard about better, then you're going to kill yourself. You're going to take drugs to escape from it. You're going to take drugs and, and, and just smoke yourself out every day. You're going to overdose on fentanyl. You're going to commit suicide. You're going to throw yourself into sex apps, dating apps, as much as you can. And if you can't find a woman to have sex with, then you will throw yourself into pornography. You will throw yourself into video games where you can at least feel like it. 
there's been a trend with uh, with anime lately, Japanese animated shows, where it is shifting to a whole new genre where it's just men being friends with women, and the women just treat them with kindness. And there is a hint of romantic subtext, but it is just men being friends with young women their own age and just experiencing basic human kindness. And these shows, as they've hit American shores, I've been reading about this, these shows are exploding in popularity over here. They're exploding in popularity over in Japan, where they have what's called the sexodus over there, where men have retreated completely. But over here in America, those shows are just exploding because they speak to a generation of young men who just want even the smallest scrap of kindness, stability, love, warmth. The brain says, I should be marrying the girl next door. She should be my friend as we play together and, and throw rocks and fight with sticks and, and catch frogs, and then I'll marry her someday and we'll have kids. That's what the brain is saying, and it's not. It's not happening. It's not happening. you got to fight on Tinder to try to have sex with a girl who has had sex with more men than you have ever met. And that's the culture now, and men don't want that, so they're just retreating. Why are men retreating? All of this should explain that. All of this should explain that. I'm going to have to do a whole other video on what we should do about this. whole other video. But I hope this has helped you. If there are young men watching this, insecure young men, I hope this has helped you understand why you feel like you don't have a place, why you feel like the world doesn't want you, why you feel like you're a stranger or an alien in your own culture, perhaps even in your own family, why it feels like the world's against you, why your stress level is always so high, and why it doesn't feel like it will ever get better. It can. It can. That's what my whole channel is for. I have, what, 70, 80, 90 videos on this channel now? I've got books I've written on how to fix this. Slaying Your Fears on Amazon. It's five bucks on Amazon. I think the audiobook is seven bucks. The audiobook is like three hours. You can change your life in an evening by going and listening to that audiobook. Two hours, 45 minutes, I think. Narrated. You can fix this. But the world is not talking about fixing it. The world is talking about more escapism. It's saying pornography isn't enough. We need what is virtual reality pornography where you're in the moment. Video games aren't enough. We need full immersion video games. Social media is not enough. We need virtual reality, virtual reality to escape from our life into another world where it feels like we can finally be happy. I need a do-over is what that is. And there is no do-over. There's fixing what you have now, and you can. I've worked with people to fix this. Oh, man, you can fix it. And life can be so, so good because there are people out there who will love you and who are building these systems, and there is so much more than this. This There is so much more than this. But this is why. So I hope you understand why young men are so anxious nowadays, and there is so much to do about it. Let's talk about that. Leave me comments if you know someone like this. If this has spoken to you and this is you, leave me a comment. If this is not you and you think this is a load of crap, then you're probably one of those angry baby, angry baby boomers who, uh, who usually yells at me when I talk about this. I sound like I'm down on all the boomers. I'm really not. But the, it, the cultural brokenness hit them hard and tore apart their generation like in half. And half of them knew, half of them just crumbled and gave in to selfishness. And the other half had no idea what was happening and tried their best to be good parents. And there's just no overcoming that in a family. It's very hard to overcome that in a family, especially if you don't understand attachment and how to fix it and how to, how to contextualize it. There's very, very little that they could have done. The good ones, the very little they could have done to fix the situation. So leave me comments, like, comment, subscribe, follow the channel, brag to your friends about it. Tell them you're smart because you watch this guy in a cool blazer with a, now I have a fake plant over here. Got that fake plant. Think about filling those shelves with more cool stuff. I don't know. Write to me. <laughs> Leave me a comment. Tell me what I should put over here on this shelf. There we go. This looks empty over here. I don't know. Maybe I should put like a lamp. Hourglass. I don't know if time is running out as I do the video. We'll find out. Thank you for watching. I hope you watch again. And if you know young men in your life, please reach out to them. Best thing I can tell you right now is give them a hug. Because most men have gone five to ten years without a hug. It's a horrifying statistic. Most men have gone five to ten years without a hug, and they can still remember the last one they got. So if you feel really, really sad and bleak at the end of this video, go find a young man, give him a hug, tell him it's going to be okay. 
he'll might get choked up. Don't be surprised. Thank you.